Hello, viewers. I'm SB. And I am Amabel. And welcome back to Disco Elysium, uh, where I've just had a big meal and a milkshake. And I'm drowsy, so I'm going to take a nap. You've got this, right? I got this. Yeah. Okay. All right. All right. We all so learned gonna... We all learned a lot of things from the, the pause menu there. Uh, yeah. Hopefully. And now, yeah, back to the back to the thing. Looks like there was more construction here once, decades ago. But before you wander any further away, yeah. I, I had a thing that I meant to say last episode and I spaced. Okay. You can say it while I wander. How about um, that? Well, as long as you're not wandering into a place where you're clicking on stuff. Okay. Because I know how you love to click while talking is happening. <laughs> um, there's a pattern that I noticed in Joyce's dialogue, and I meant to bring it up at the end of the Joyce conversation, and then... Um, by the time the Joyce conversation actually ended, I had I had forgotten about it. Um, but there, there's sort of like a... I, I kind of was thinking of it as an annoying tick, almost, in the way she speaks, where she, like, pretends to forget things. She's like, uh, oh, how did they put it? You know? But yeah. then, But then she does it in a more active way later in the conversation and this is what really like brought me around to the to the idea that actually it's a tactic is where she asks you to tell her what you think of the union based entirely on her description of the union you've had no information or interaction outside of her telling you about the union and then she insists on your opinion right yeah um she keeps doing this thing where she pauses and pretends to search for words, like almost as if to give you the ability to step in and, and like complete her sentence for her. Like she is trying to offer as much space and opportunity as possible for you to assume her viewpoint, for you to just like step into her sentence. Yeah. That's a good observation, sweetheart. It's like capital capital drawing you in and making you see things from its point of view, making sort of sort of like not not so much aggressively subsuming your identity as repeatedly inviting you to be subsumed. Yeah. Just offering. Yeah. No, that that's that's a really good um, observation there. Thank you. I'm very smart, and I have earned my nap. Okay. Let's see what these people are up to. Shame. Whining about your back every time you bring out the measuring tape. Hold on a second. So I did I did turn the game up a little bit between episodes. Um, mm -hmm. The stereo mix is just going to be sort of an ongoing struggle, especially since we're recording across uh, two different computers with, uh, I'm just going to gently say, a vastly different quality between <laughs> a sort of across our array of hardware. Yeah. Rene, you are a man with a fork in a world of soup. Please, let's just try to enjoy the game, all right? The other one is eating a big sandwich. A fork in a world of soup is very good. Um, a man Gosh. with a fork. A man with a fork in a world of soup. Okay, but yeah, I, I get that. Yes, but it's also good the way I said it that wasn't in the game. Sure. Yeah, I'll he listen. Put in his hand, going into his mouth, the sandwich. It's hauntingly beautiful. Sorry. Please thank, continue. Thank you, electrochemistry. <laughs> You keep breaking my concentration. You're old. I can see that. We're both old. Now stop grabbing your ass like it's a girl. I will say also part of the problem is that um, it's less true. It seems to be less true than it was with the initial uh, dialogue. But even here in the final cut, the mixing on the dialogue is still really um, inconsistent. Yeah. The characters do not speak at the same volume. These manly men are playing balls. This is a ball game. Grab a ball and play it. Don't ask questions. Shoot first. Ask questions never. 
Wow, this is your, okay. your developed physical instrument just just shooting out into the world. Well, you know, I'll tell you something. And I, I'm trying to take it into account your advice that I should, instead of thinking about what I would do, think about what a character would do that I'm playing, like this is some kind of game where I play a role. Mm-hmm. Yeah, this, but, this person you've built with all these, all this physique. And this, and this desire for intellectualism, but perhaps um, not actually a lot of intellectualism, which I think is, I, I think that's going to be very challenging for you, actually, like, because you, you are a very intellectual person. Am I? Yeah, absolutely. And I mean that both in the sense of, like, that you have a very developed intellectualism, but also that you... Um, but that you strive also in this in this direction, um, and you this this is just like the way that you engage with things. Uh, so to play a character who isn't and kind of can't, but has the desire to be basically the thing that you already are, I think like I think that's hard to play. Well, what I was going to say is that at the same time, if I look at if I approach this in the way I would approach. Mm -hmm. um a game you've seen so you you played games with me yes. you played yeah board games with me and you've seen how i react to a teach uh yeah you you that's the spirit don't <laughs> even waste your breath asking about the game they wouldn't know anyway they're way past their prime okay that's not a funny that's not a funny joke i'm sorry yeah, when I it wasn't... comes time when it comes time for the teach, you um, sort of the huff and stamp your feet and treat <laughs> treat me like a torturer who has just arrived. And you're like, I know I have an appointment to be tortured, but I don't have to like it. <laughs> um, I that's, the, that's I, a general vibe. Yeah, I wasn't real. I was already starting. My my reflexes are slower than yours. I think I was already starting to click. Okay. Before I realized you were answering the question. <laughs> okay, okay. So I wasn't trying to do a, a fake out on you. So unfortunately, the check, despite the fact that physical instrument is the one who led, um, the check is a hand-eye coordination check. Okay, but with a plus two in the point yeah. you put into hand-eye coordination, this actually isn't that bad. It's remarkable because your motorics is like garbage. But... Well, and here's the thing. Even even if I if I flub this, it will be as much fun, I hope, as when I try to uh, sneak away from the, yeah. yeah. All right, nice. Are you sure you're doing that right? You seem surprised by the ball's lack of weight. No matter, you'll make it work. You seem to be looking away from the situation. I don't know how to play bulls. I'm gonna be straight with you here. But this yeah. seems wrong to me. God, this is right. You feel the familiar tremble of excitement and adrenaline that precedes every victory. Time has frozen. I'll feel the ball. The cold metal ball is surprisingly smooth against your neck. It has a pattern on it. Probably a sponsored ball. Yours would only be covered with bumps of learning and scars of victory. Already, your muscles are adjusting to the weight, the nervous system calibrated, until you <laughs> and the ball have merged into a single entity. The man ball is ready. Here, I think we figured out his name. ...ruffles your hair as you stand there, feet firmly planted. All sounds, smells, even the wind. Everything fades until the only thing left is the union of man and ball. West, in the Grand Couron area, a sharp overhand left from Arsène Luc Edelbrock sends the Samaran heavyweight champion, Koistia Miasnok Koistinicha, flying to the mat. The crowd goes wild. Revachol loves the heroes. Oh, interesting. There's time for a last glance inward. Who am I? An embodiment of pure motion. A fine-tuned locomotor running at maximum efficiency. 
Behold the fear and confusion reflecting in the eyes of the two feeble geezers. They are in awe of your superiority. You are a god to them. Some would still say you're a cop, but I guess we're beyond that now. <laughs> the inertia can be contained no more than a bullet leaving a gun. Let go. Be the bullet. Did that go in the ocean? Wait. Meld! Well, there is the meld! <laughs> that was a success? <laughs> Not a weak rate triceps, that's for sure. Problem? I don't understand. You vandalized our game, son. We can't play Petonk with five bull. Oh, Petonk. I remember this conversation a little bit. Oh, Petonk. I understand. No, you don't. Our Petonk game is ruined. We want our bull back. It says he's getting angry again, but when did he stop being angry? Yeah. Take it easy, Rene. This is just a misunderstanding, isn't it, officer? No harm done. Of course there's harm done, you oil slug. You are as a goddamn bull. The heel of his cavalry boot slams on the ground. <sighs> I... You did throw it in the ocean. Yeah, but the guy shouted at me and like... How how much can a a bowl a bowl cost? Ten dollars. That's very funny. So real. The joke would be ten real. Okay, listen, guys, the ball is gone. I have a murder to solve. All right. A fine example you are setting here today, officer. I will remember this, and Gaston will too. It's okay, officer. Forgotten completely. It was my bull, and I have a spare. Everything is good, and we're ready to assist any way we can. He's trying to avoid conflict at any cost. Well, yeah. The lieutenant says nothing, but his face is rigid. It seems he does not approve of your athletic displays. Oh, no! It's your refusal to take responsibility I don't like. Damn. That's that's fair. It probably, you know, the the cool thing to do would have been to tell them that you'll replace the bull. Yeah. Do you know anything about the man hanged in the backyard of Whirling and Rags? Unfortunately, I don't. Unlike most of the locals, I have no qualms about assisting law enforcement. But this affair has passed me by completely. And most of the locals? In Martinez. The union is the law. So can you really blame them? But you don't have a problem with cops. Cop is a pejorative term. I don't have a problem, Miss Policeman. On the contrary, I admire the effort to bring order to our streets. So, again, you don't know anything. If I knew, I would not be afraid to tell you. I simply don't. I'm an old man. Not a coward. The daily business of the riffraff no longer concerns me. Hmm. You seem to be playing in a crater. Yes. The terrain here provides an interesting variety to a familiar game. Do you know what created it? I do. Fire from heavy artillery. Heavy artillery fire, you say? That's the best kind of artillery fire. Very interesting. Okay, so created left by artillery fire, but why? Why what? Why was heavy artillery used? Because that's what happens when communists hijack your country, execute your supreme leadership, and turn your capital into a slaughterhouse. You use heavy ordnance to clean up your home. Wait, who are the communards again? Commies, communists, socialists, anarchists, call them what you like. They just chose the name to feel special. Senseless sentimentality. Did you use artillery fire against them? 
Sadly, no. It was the foreigners who brought them to their knees. We fought valiantly. Too valiantly. So valiantly we got licked. He adds, squeezing a bull in his fist. Should have fought dirty, like they did with their suicide sex cult propaganda and mad anarchist women strapped to shrapnel bombs. We didn't, though, and we lacked caliber. God bless him, but the suzerain's cannons simply weren't big enough. They should have chosen a place away from people with buildings. This place is a damn beachhead, son. They had to soften the commies up first. He says, the pointing to the bay. The beachhead? Yes. The military coordinated amphibious landing to take back Revachel. Martinez was used as one of the three footholds in Revachel during Operation Deplo in 08. The other two are off in Stella Maris and the Delta. I shake my head and look down at the crater. This here is blood ground, where coalition boots first made landfall and cleaned those rabbit dogs out. Most likely, we plagued the tongue of their mangled corpses. Well, no, I'm glad I didn't go gig at his ball. Bull, please. You got all Grenade going there. Like he isn't hungry enough already. Uh, that explains all the war damage. Damn right, son. They laid the fire of hell on the city before they stormed it. And it worked, too. There is a strange gleam in his eyes. He approves of this radical approach. Knows it was necessary. Seems more reactionary than radical, but okay, Half-Life. The rest of the city got cleaned up, but Martinez they keep as a monument. And now the Union Socialists are practically running the place. Well, it's your own damn fault. You, we, the Coalition, Revachol, whoever you want to blame, never finished the job. Officially, the party never surrendered. Of course, they still all influence. Hmm. You don't even begin to truly understand the players of the table. Let alone the specific circumstances surrounding the... What do you think? What do you think indeed? Hmm. Well. I, I, you know, I'll go with foreign powers, clean up our mess, and now they rule us. Shake your head in shame. In shame. I'm sorry it had to be them. After eight years of fighting those hyenas, boiling cats for food and drinking piss in the mountains. <laughs> What's wrong with drinking piss? <laughs> I would have preferred if the right honorable King Guillaume returned to Revachal. Or even if that damn clan Fussel had risen from the grave and led us. Sadly, that was not the case. Instead, all that is just, truly, and beautiful in the world. Was wiped away, and now it's neon signs with toothpaste ads everywhere. Foreign influence peddling garbage and stupid music on the radio. He sighs. This is just what the commies wanted. This was their plan all along. This is what they wanted to replace the role of the suzerain with. Well, I know what a suzerain is, so this is... But, but maybe my character does but I'll ask these questions first. Who was this Frizzle? Damn Frizzle. He was the king we couldn't protect. The Carabineers failed him and the crown. He died in the hands of the Hyperlay in a very public execution. Well, that's what happens to kings. Uh, you mentioned Ghislaine. Sweetie. In both blood and mind, let Revachal before Frizzle. He would have been better, but the damn commies drove him into exile. <laughs> what? What? That is not Guillaume. Guillaume. Okay, look. If, if my French pronunciation is going to be a problem. Yeah, it is, by the way. <laughs> it's going to be a long series. 
Oh, I reckon that's true no matter what. <laughs> what exactly is a suzerain? The suzerain is the king. Has everyone forgotten already? They forgotten already. It's no use talking to you. You were still in Daddy's borders when it happened. When we took our last stand against the fifth and rode the cavalry straight into gunfire. So listen, you and this guy were never going to get along, but also you did throw his bull in the sea. You know what? I I will try. I will always try a check if I can. This does not feel like a high stakes check. Okay, sure. You know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This guy is secretly the murderer, but I doubt it. What is it about this old soldier that makes him stand so proud? It's how proud he is of the murder he committed. That's probably it. All you observe is a veteran refusing to let go of the past and his old uniform. This is not uncommon. This is the uniform of the Royal Carabineers in service of Fissel the First, Guillaume Le Lion, and the valiant King Philip V before him. Don't you mean Fristel the Fan? Hmm. Yeah, she should have that magic school bus. <laughs> you do not speak his name, Craven, although he was a clown. But he was our clown, ours to ridicule and to mourn. There's something you missed. You will get to it. Don't worry. Hmm. Thank you for your time. <laughs> Said exactly like that. Yeah. What we got here? Enormous bulls worthy of a real man. And they're cannonballs, right? Some great tectonic uh, force has cracked the pavement like an eggshell. Yeah, I guess it was an eggshell. Yeah. All right. So we're going to walk. There's a whole street over here. Okay. Mm -hmm. A heap of snow melts in this wheelbarrow. Oh, that's nice. It is? I mean, that's a nice. The street sign reads, "Fuck the police." Uh, it, it, yeah, I, I, I yeah, it, it's a nice little literary detail. And, okay. And, okay. You know the the writing team or writer, whoever's responsible for all this, like, they're really good at their job. The RCM in Martinez. What can I help you with? I have some questions for you. Of course. What can I help you with? Uh, we need directions. Of course. Where to? Uh, where what am I? Mean? I'm disoriented. I don't know where I am. Yes, sir. District of Martinez. This intersection is called Roundabout North. Okay, and her, that... written, her written dialogue does not quite match her speech there. City of Revachal, District of Martinez. And this is Roundabout North, this intersection. Okay, w which is where I need the lorry drivers. Out. Just wants directions. The lieutenant seems uncomfortable with the level of disorientation that you are displaying. <sighs> what is up in the north? There's the pier, the Cape Side apartment buildings. Some more tenements. Not a lot, really. Okay, what is in the east? The harbor gate. Some kind of commotion, I think. I don't follow the local politics. A fleet store, too. In the south? Some shops and a bridge. The canal bridge leads to the coast, but it's broken, I think. Some kind of accident, probably. What is on the other side of the canal? Just coast. There's a little fishing village there, and a fish market, but that got closed down ages ago. Rows of stalls under a broad roof, where silvery fish were heaped on newspapers. Water, water everywhere, pouring from the heavens in the shadow of the old church. 
Shivers is such an interesting skill. Yeah, yeah, it absolutely is. I really like this whole thing where we have these these skills with with their voices and with like their it's it's so good. Yeah, I, <laughs> it's like I I really I really like the idea of the thing Shivers is not as something intellectual but as like the immediacy of sense memory. Yeah. That's that's it's a really really smart design. Yeah, now you played a lot more CRPGs than I have. I have, that's true. Uh and that I played this one and that's probably it. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh how good are they generally about like interiority? Cuz that's definitely a focus here and it seems quite novel. Uh yeah, I, I think it is quite novel. Like, a lot of a lot of CRPGs kind of leave the interiority to you, especially because it's very common for them to have some kind of um mechanism whereby you are you are playing a stranger in a strange land, right? Your um you know, you're a character who has the serious retrograde amnesia in about half of them, uh, or there are circumstances like um, in the original Fallout games where you live outside of society and you're you're just being exposed to the world for the first time, or so like, yeah, basically like you don't have interiority. Your your main character is absolutely just a cipher for you. Yeah. Uh, this is really, it's really quite uncommon to have a CRPG where both you get to do a significant amount of character building of like character crafting in terms of the way the character is and what they're good at, but also they actually represent a person who exists in the world already. Um, this might be the only one, actually. Yeah, because I, you know, my assumption, so like... A CRPG does does that include something like the Bethesda games? You know the the Elder Scrolls. And yeah, the, absolutely, absolutely, it does. Because in those games, like you just you create the character. Yeah, this person, yeah, this person, sort of yeah, comes into being at the moment of you deciding to play the game, and in the Bethesda games, they are a person with a history in the world in theory, but they're definitely like a person who is created rather than a person who pre-exists in terms of like in terms of them having a an internal reality yeah whereas i mean this guy like you know if this was a game where i could actually create a character i wouldn't have created a guy yeah and i nobody, wouldn't have created <laughs> nobody would create the character that we are given here i think yeah and that's a really interesting choice. And there's there's a bunch of ways in which you don't understand what I mean yet. Um. Okay. I, I find it also really interesting, you know, because we have such a specific character with the retrograde amnesia, there's almost the kind of thing where um, there's who the character was and who the character aspires to be and can kind of recreate himself as, at least until his memory comes back. Yeah. And I, I hope I get to play with that a bit. Yeah, and, uh, and like the, like you get this, you get this new thing. You have this new lease on life, but in like, in a lot of very important ways, it will always be built on top of the things that are underneath it. That's uh, quite personally resonant. <laughs> yeah, in a number of ways. Uh, what kind of a fish market is this? I'm going to lean into the shivers whenever it comes up. I think because it's so interesting and because having a character who doesn't even know about the world he lives in, you know, um, mm -hmm. I think he would listen to those kind of instincts, the, the sense memories that I think he listened to the shivers very much. Mm -hmm. So what kind of, what kind of a fish market is this? I don't know. The abandoned kind. It used to gather every spring, but there's nothing to do there now. Just drug addicts. Well, it okay, sounds like there's is... at least one thing to do there, then. Yeah. What is in the West? It's just water. No, actually, I think they call it the Martinez Inlet. 
there are some islands in the bay, but they're hard to reach. Thanks. That's all for now. No problem. You have such interesting line reads. I mean, this is why I'm not, I'm not, I am not an actress. <laughs> um, I don't feel right asking her to borrow her gloves. Uh, and I like, even with amnesia, I, I know what this business is about. <laughs> I live in the world. <laughs> Who are you exactly? Me? I am just a gardener. Cool. And what are you doing here? Because this is not a garden. I'm working. Working on what? I have a greenhouse in the yard there. I've been trying to get some work done. But? Well, as you probably know, there's a corpse hanging from a tree there. It smells pretty bad, so I have to take breaks. Oh, I have some good news for you. Don't worry, miss. We are here to clean it up. You can get to work soon. Mm -hmm. Thank you. My head is about to explode from all the salts I've had to inhale. Uh, the body is down. Down? Do you mean the body is finally gone? <laughs> well, you put no. your, you put yourself here. <laughs> no. The body is down on the ground. Oh, right. Can you tell me when you've taken him away then? Uh, I'll use this to... I actually will ask about the gloves now. I'll use this to segue into it. Uh, can I borrow your gloves? I'm doing an autopsy. An autopsy? Wow. Sure, keep them. I have another pair. Okay. I have to run. Five XP and free gloves. Yeah, let's 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 put on the gloves. Yeah. Bye bye, bugs. It's a very forensic look. Okay. Okay, let me get out of the thing. All right, well, while I'm here, I'm going to go talk to the lorry drivers. You know what's a great word? Oh, you're about to say something I have a huge problem with. <laughs> lorry. This is, this is such a good... <laughs> That's right, because I might not be able to pronounce French words correctly, but you have serious issues with British words and the way British people pronounce them. I did, you know, some certain ones, certain ones don't don't they paint me as a as broadly an anglophobe, but yeah, definitely some. Also, I guess I broadly am. It's probably true, actually. I mean, it's not it's not usually the most cheerful place for you or I to be. Yeah, it, it was definitely less true before I figured out I was trans. There. They're real fucking weird about that over there. <laughs> yep. I am a gander and a hunter and a gatherer. Feel like a traveler. The man mutters to himself, accenting the beats as he goes. A simple little cadence. He seems to be making it up as he goes. <laughs> I am the law. <laughs> Keep listening. From another planet. Hey there. What's going on here? It's the jam, my man. He motions toward the sprawl of lorries with a sweeping gesture. What's the jam? It's a traffic jam for the ages. Harbor gates up the street are shut tight. No explanation given. Workers on strike. Scabs agitating, an all-around clusterfuck. <laughs> Meanwhile, we're all stuck here in long-haul limbo for days upon days upon days. Upon days. Limbo, huh? <laughs> oh, cool. Leave. 
<laughs> so that's where I am. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's official. He too agrees. This is the antechamber of the afterlife. <sighs> so how long have you been here? Feels like forever. Like I was born on this here roundabout and this was all I ever knew. Just me and the metal and the tires, the oil and the fumes of mazout. I, I mean, you have this conceptualization, right? You have this aspiration to yeah. be sort of like yeah. artistic and... I'm going to go with that, but I, I will say it pains me that I don't get to say, keep it simple. Not in that part. It's, I'm here to ask questions. Crime questions. That sounds delightful, but I, I will tell him I can roll with his extravagant phrasing. Yeah, imagine. It's been a whole week already. He snickers. So tell me, what do you need? Mm. <laughs> okay, let's, let's let's just shoot my shot. You seem like a man who knows about drugs. Ah oh, man, me and narcotics go way back. Had some good times surfing the psychic waves of my own consciousness, you know. But those days are behind me. There are other addictions in my life now. Why the inquiry, my man? Hmm. Do I want to be this upfront about it? Or do I want to... Oh, because this is... The first one is an accusation. It is and pretty I'm... accusatory. And I'm clearly a cop. Um... Let me be straight with you. I'm trying to figure out who's smuggling drugs out of Terminal B. This is, of course... We have course... Lead, sir. Someone on this roundabout is waiting for a bell shipment from the harbor to load it on their lorry and drive it to Jamrat. I was going to say, this is, of course, a fully non-functional strategy if he's the one smuggling the drugs. <laughs> yeah. I appreciate Kim jumping in there, though. Not me, man. No way. I don't need any trouble. Shit's bad enough anyway. This jam's got folks up in arms, and I'm afraid it's headed toward a conflagration. Wait, then why are you still hanging around? Gotta guard the stuff. Bosses don't look kindly on missing cargo, and it gives me time to work on my rhymes. A rhyme smith? This is quite credible. It goes with its cadence and way of speaking. Challenge him to a rap battle. Challenge him to a rap battle. <sighs> oh, sweetie. But see, that's the thing where, like, does this game have, like, a functional way for my character to be better at rap battles than I am? A procedurally generated rap battle. Oh, okay. Working on these rhymes clearly leads to muscular atrophy. Make sure you don't get hooked on poetry. Oh, physical instrument. Incredibly judgy. <laughs> Jealous and insecure is what it is. Who do you think could be conducting the drug trade, then? Look, man, I try to stay away from the criminal underbelly of Revachon. I'm a guest here. You really need to find another man to probe with those questions. So, it's a higher check. Your conceptualization is not bad. Okay, let me see if I can... I, yeah, think. I mean, think about how it's going to open him up, right? Yeah. Let me talk to him a little bit more first to see if I can okay. land on something that will give me a, a modifier. All right, all right. Tell me more about this strike. It's like, whatever's going on over at the docks. Workers got a blockade set up, making demands. No way in or out. What's the union demanding? And hopefully I'm going to hear from the union side instead of from, you know, Miss Strike Buster's side. Some pretty wild stuff I hear. Like a giant new power crane in half the company? I forget what exactly. Good on them, I guess. I've heard talk there's a company rep in town, too. Like, a strike negotiator type. They know what's up. Precise demands and so on. What do you think the company wants? They want to keep that money flowing in, my man. ka -ching. That 
That's <laughs> okay. Anything else I should know? Anything else? Yeah, this ain't really my area of expertise. I just do my job and get paid. I have things to do and places to be. All of us do. All of who? Us lorry drivers. Cam, your nurse. You still hang around here waiting for this mess to end. Most have scurried off somewhere to get drunk or high. Or laid. Not that I blame them, really. Not you? Not my thing. Chasing transient pleasures is a drag these days. I prefer the examined life now. Thinking, reflecting, observing. He glances down the road toward the horizon, a glint of something in his eyes. What's better than chasing transient pleasures? The more transient, the better. When one's ended, you can get on to the next one. I mean, electric chemistry is not wrong here. <laughs> Conceptualization, has that, did that give you any, because you, you got some insight, I feel like. No, no modifier. No. What are you hauling anyway? Oh, high-grade narcotics, illegal firearms, stuff like that. Okay, and what are you actually hauling? Can't even get a few jokes past you, my man. I've got another haul of found cargo. Mostly sporting goods, track suits, and that kind of thing. They usually get shipped to Grodd and the Oxens. Though we've been making headway in the Il Moran market lately. That's your machine behind you? This rockin' beauty. Sure is. Like a rash you can't get rid of. You interested in heavy-duty cargo machinery? Yeah, these lorries are pretty neat. Neat. For carrying large quantities of cargo a long distance. These found tracksuits need to find their way to the kids way out in Wamra and Loran Bird somehow. Could, could I get one of those tracksuits you're hauling? We're pals and all, but I can't just freely hand out the merchandise. The bosses won't be happy. Okay. There's no denying it. Your body needs to feel the touch of some good performance wear. <laughs> I don't <laughs> Right, I had another question The man taps his fingers Rhythmically against his arm Know anything about the dead man? The one hanging behind the hostel there? He ain't one of us drivers I know that, all accounted for Otherwise I haven't really asked about that Been wasting time right here Keep him busy It's easy to see He's telling the truth He's kept his nose out of the dark stuff. Busy with what? Analyzing the fundamental structural and psychological conditions of being stranded in the midst of a sea of motor lorries and their sad, despondent chauffeurs. And your conclusion? A sense of surprise there ain't more bodies hanging from more trees. Okay, fair enough. All right, so this... I'm not going to ask him for money... All right, and I hit my, my, my best verse. Do it. Wait, there's something here, stored away in some dusty corner. It starts like... I hope I'm not plagiarizing. Amir's temperature is always zero. It is ice in the veins. Its camera is an x-ray. Whoa. What else? It is a chalice held out to you in silent communion. Silent communion. That's good. He's transfixed by the words. Where gaspingly you partake of a shifting identity, never your own. Dang. That's some great shit. You came up with that yourself. Here's the thing. like, it's, uh, Technically, is it plagiarism if you literally don't know that you stole it? Uh, what if your brain does not permit you to know that? I think the words are mine. I like that this is an option where I'm not, um, I'm not expressing complete confidence. Mm -hmm. Like I, I like that, that this is an option. Fucking hey, 
Seems I got you all wrong. Crops are much known for their artistic sensibilities these days. It's good to meet a fellow poet. Someone with an appreciation for real text. The others here say you don't really get it. Makes it all easier to bear if the words are pretty. I get you. When they really click, it makes the world seem manageable. Good to be on the same page. You found some common ground with this man. Even impressed him. The next time you look in the mirror, though, remember those words. Hmm. Good for now. Good talk. Don't be a stranger. He gives a salute with two fingers. I'm, I'm, One on I'm, each hand, if you know what I'm saying. Oh, I was using to think of it as, as like the horns. <laughs> yeah, it's probably not, but that would be good. All right, so I'm going to walk around here. See if there's more people to talk to. There's thing to look at here anyway. A bold slogan. Humanox covers the truck. All right, what we got here? An old monument stands in the middle of the traffic island, pointing toward the sea. It looks as if it's been reassembled piece by piece, secured and mounted in the air with the aid of numerous ropes and rods. Who is this? A silver plaque on the statue's pedestal reads, I am Philip III, the squanderer, the greatest of the Philippian kings of Rebishol, son of Philip II, the opulent, father of Philip IV, the insane. All right, what did this king do? Even by the standards of the Philippian kings, old sumptuous Philip was known for his profligacy. Sweetheart? Yeah. What does profligacy mean? Uh, his uh, sort of freedom with spending is what is what's ah. being discussed here. In what way? Well, he blew through the whole national treasury, starting the decline of one of the penultimate century's greatest superpowers. The suzerain of Revachol. Okay, it's really interesting they use the word penultimate mm -hmm. here. Because the penultimate is the one before the last. And and I, I, I get um, where yeah. that can make sense. But it usually means like the last, not as the, not as the most recent but the one before the final one, before the final century. And I think that's a really interesting choice. It gives this whole world, like, uh, the whole world has, like, a feeling of being spoiled, of being curdled, of, of it being past its prime. Yeah. And how much of that is, you know... I mean, nostalgia, that which is poisonous... You know, um, the people have been complaining about how the world's rotten now for all of human history. For for thousands of years, we've been talking about the good old days. But it certainly suffuses this. And um, certainly living now as we do in times that are uh, certainly feel sometimes... apocalyptic yeah um, yeah i can see where you're coming from on that yeah uh it, it's certainly quite resonant and evocative his own maladministration foreshadowed the fall of the monarchy during the anti-centennial revolution an end to his family line and the monarchy on the insulindian isola how did he manage to blow through the entire national treasury? That actually is quite easy to do, and <laughs> is like this, this historically. Yeah, we have a we have a couple of compelling real world examples, and yeah, I love I love Mad King. Um, oh, sorry, converted into a treasure chamber, 
where he stored unfathomable wealth. Krugerrands, bars of gold, ornate weaponry, armor, and various chalices. Okay, please go ahead, sweetheart. It's, it's, I'm always, sorry it's always the chalices. Um, uh, King Ludwig, who's, you know, uh, often commonly known as Mad King Ludwig, although that's not maybe the most sensitive uh, language with which to discuss him, which is just like he kept having m more and more absurd and ornate and kind of, like, kind of gently insane castles built until there just wasn't any money left. Yeah, that sounds like a good subject for a board game. Or several, like a full series of board games. He called it the Sol Auron. It was obscene. There were whispers he slept on a huge pile of gold-dipped feathers, like some obese dragon, instead of a bed, like a normal person. <laughs> yes, thank you, Encyclopedia. <laughs> Wait, really? There's no way that's true. And that 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 I doubt it is, because a lot of the stories we have about... First of all, you know, I mean, to be clear, monarchs suck. But a lot of the stories about monarchs that, that are told by their political enemies are always exaggerated to such a degree where, like, it's really hard to trust the historical record in some cases. Except you for know. the story of King Ludwig, which we know is true because we still have the castles. Still have the castles, yeah. But 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 this thing, like, if there are whispers about a huge pile of gold different, no. no. Also, how would you even sleep on a pile of, of feathers? Like, it's going to be so hard to keep those in one place. Yeah. The moment the moment you try to lay down on a pile of feathers, it's going to just, like, flow out from under you. Wait, really? There's no way that's true. But wait, you haven't even heard about his fabled cocaine addiction. Well, I mean, literally, I have this is my own brain telling me, so I must have. The what now? Yeah, I love that. That's really interesting, the way we're having the conversation. Like, it's a really good... Um, it's making us feel more disjointed than yeah. I assume that you get in these retrograde amnesia games because you're having these conversations with aspects of yourself and... Um, you know, it's kind of a, you know, I've been thinking a lot lately about the use of alienation and distance in games because of the, the book I'm writing. And, um, this very much is kind of an alienating technique. Uh, and it's not so much alienating us from the character, but making us feel alienated from the world and disoriented. And I think that's, uh, really smart choices. It's sort, of like, it's sort of causing you to identify with the character in being alienated from yes. Encyclopedia, which is an aspect of yourself, which really deepens that like sort of divide between the old you and the new you. Yes, exactly. The what now? You see, old Philippe wasn't just good at squandering the national treasury on gold and ceremonial weaponry. He was also a prodigious snorter of nose candy. Wait, do they call it nose candy? They do. That's very, that's very silly. Not just any nose candy, though. We're talking Royal Philippian Blow, allegedly twice as potent as the stuff you find nowadays, and purple. Philippian cocaine was purple. Electrochemistry, I feel like you're maybe falling for some stories, or... <laughs> this is a lot to process. His Majesty's courtiers said it helped him connect with the higher realms. Okay, where is he buried now? Beneath the cold waters of the Insulindian Bay, thrown there by the revolutionaries after they cleaned out the royal mausoleum. That makes sense. A group of marble pleurons still surround the king's vandalized tomb. A deathly cold wind sweeps up candy wrappers and old newspapers. What happened to the statue? The original was blown apart by communards, then further damaged during the landing of the coalition's airships during the turn of the century revolution when Martinez was leveled. A lot of revolutions. No, I, that's the same revolution, I think. Right? The communards? The communards took over. Okay, and, but um... they ref 
the coalition showed up and, and blew them all up. But they refer to an anti-century and a turn of a century revolution. Yeah. Maybe it's the same name for... But, you know, commonly when you have... Yeah, I, I think it's I think it's one big war and a term being used to distinguish the time before the war the same way that, you know, antebellum, which technically just means before the war, ha yeah. generally has a more specific meaning. But, of course, like a lot of revolutions throughout history, you have multiple revolutions essentially happening in sequence within a country or something. Yeah. You know. Yeah, but this Maurice is the, this is the communards and the coalition. I feel like these are the same. Okay. Who restored the monument? Some years ago, a group of liberal, artistically inclined individuals, designers mostly, thought it would be ironic to restore the statue of the most wasteful ruler of Rivershell in the poorest part of the city. Classy. It does sound like something liberals would do. The statue is supposed to capture the moment it was blown apart, like an instant frozen in time, a rare butterfly trapped in amber, floating on a sea of shit. <laughs> I'll just say it's a bad idea. I like. I get the idea. I don't think it's a good idea to do that. If, in you know, to kind of yeah. To make the poor people part of the joke. That's such a bad idea. How do you like my naturalistic uh, line <laughs> readings? See, I, th I think it's a bad idea. That's such a bad idea is is communicating like, several different senses of bad at the same time. People in Martinez tend to agree, as do many prominent art critics and thought leaders, with more nuanced social awareness than the young ironists. Yeah, because it, it usually doesn't take much, does it? No, it doesn't. It, it, it definitely, I, I appreciate they identified it as liberal artistic inclined individuals because this is very much like the kind of thing uh, like that a shit lib would do on social media. Yeah. It's... Philip III, the squanderer, however, with his bronze face up in the air, doesn't seem concerned about what the hoi polloi think of him in death. All right, well, we're going to leave. That was that was really interesting. Um, yeah. I do think, yeah, uh, sorry, do you, not, do you not agree? I No, I, I do. I just, I, I, I am prompting you to continue to your thought. Okay. Well, it's just like, it, it's a fascinating amount of detail that we're able to wring out of that, especially considering... You know, the amnesia and everything. Don't click on anything. You asked me to be vigilant about the time. We're ending the episode, so don't. Okay. Wow. Yeah, no, it, it kind of flies, right? Like, that, that was definitely my experience with this game the first time. Was I, would keep, I would keep looking over, and, it, like, 90 minutes would already have passed. If you look at the episode links, they're bizarre. Um, anyway, that, that's going to be it for us for today. Thank you all so much for watching. There is just, there is so much here. And when you come back next time, we're going to continue coming to grips with it. We're going to be in this like initial phase of just like, holy hell, what is going on around me? Uh, for quite some time. <laughs> this, is a, this is a big portion of the game. Uh, so I hope y'all are into it. Come back next time for more and we'll see you then.